So this is a video about the um, EPOD electric car um, electric motor speed control. So the electric motor in the car, I'm thinking might be around uh, 10 to 20 horsepower, depending on about how much acceleration you need. Uh, but it can easily reach highway speeds with a small motor um, because it's so aerodynamically efficient. Um, and I can basically just design this larger. I can have maybe a circle of 10 of these um, with their own heat sinks and a fan at the bottom blowing air up. So that'll actually allow for natural convection. So as the fins heat up, the air will rise and it'll pull new air through the system. So I could probably build a controller for maybe, you know, $20, $30. Uh, most of the ones available that can handle, you know, 100 amps are $500, $1,000 or more. So um, I'm going to continue building this and see how much power I can get out of this and then start doing some tests with the uh, full-scale motor from the uh, electric EPOD car. 36% it starts moving. And there's a nice increase, 50%, So you can really hear the difference and see the difference in speed. So now I have everything hooked up. I have my temperature gauge at the back of the MOSFET. So right now the ambient is about 28 degrees. And I have the motors hooked up and the fan hooked up. So as I increase this, everything will start moving. This is 43%. So 32, you can see the temperature is going up. And we're pulling about three um, Amps, and as I increase more, you can see the amps go up. So 10 minutes at 90%. The whole time it's it was sitting at 38 the whole time. Now it actually dropped to 37. So the temperature is very stable. So this is a great operating temperature for this MOSFET. A better design would be if I had a temperature gauge like this that fed into the Arduino, and then the Arduino would control the fan and it would um, increase the speed of the fan based on the temperature. So at maybe 60 or 70 degrees, the fan would go at full power. Um, if it was at 50 degrees, it would go to half power, so it would regulate the speed of the fan based only on the temperature. Now it's only in a, in a set loop with the motor speed. So to control this motor, you want smooth control that's very efficient. So the best way to do it is with pulp width modulation. So I used, here's an N-channel MOSFET, it's a very small component, and then I used the Arduino, and it sends a signal of pulses on off. So depending on how long the on pulse is, um, more, more power will go to the motor. So instead of using a resistor, this is very efficient. A resistor. MOSFET is amazing. This can handle 60 volts and 30 amps. So that means this tiny MOSFET can handle about uh, 2.4 horsepower. So it's just a tiny, a tiny little thing there. So if I had um, four or five of these, I could control um, 10 horsepower. And these components are only maybe a dollar each. So with $10 worth of MOSFETs, I should be able to control um, at least uh, 10 to 20 horsepower. And this computer fan, it's very low power. It only takes um, 100 uh, milliamps or something like that. It's also 12 volts. Um, so it only uses maybe one hundredth of the power that's going to the motor. So it's a very small amount of the power um, that I'm using for cooling that I'm actually using to propel the vehicle. So now I have the 12 volt battery with my fan. Now this fan is from an 18 volt drill um, and it's really powerful with 12 volts. Try to get away. So I'm starting to build a very simple controller for my electric car. Uh, I don't want to buy the expensive controllers. So I bought a $1 potentiometer, which can control the speed. And then I bought this uh, MOSFET. Which so I got this also from the garbage. This is from a CD player, this heatsink. I think it's just some um, copper um, sheet metal that's been bent. So I have it there with whatever um, paste, thermal paste was there already in the unit. So I think it's pretty much heating up this entire piece. So I've set up my own pulse switch modulation um, 
program here. So right now I'm just starting with 10 hertz, which is really low. Um, the hertz has to be a lot higher to smooth it out, but it's really easy to see um, what's actually going on. So the way the program works is basically you're controlling your delay. So your percentage, per is the percentage of um, the potentiometer, so it goes from 100 to 0. So first of all, you set it to high, and you delay for percentage. So if it's at 100%, then you delay for 100. And then here it's 100 minus the percent. So 100% it is on for a delay of 100 and it's off for no time, so it's full power. Now, if you're at the low power, your percent is zero, then you minus it so it's off the whole time. It's off for 100 um, milliseconds from the delay from a total of 100. So I can show you how that works now. So the best way to really visualize pulse width modulation is to use a light. So I have just a light from uh, it's a car light, it's like 50 cents, really cheap, it's for your blinker or something like that. So I have this at 10 hertz, so it's going to flash 10 times a second now. It's always going to turn on and off 10 times a second, but the actual time that it's on is going to get bigger. So you can really adjust the power that's going to the light without losing efficiency. There's no resistance or anything, this is just turning on and off to change the brightness. So if you increase the frequency, then you won't be able to see the actual flashing. 50. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So now I use this analog write function, which is the normal thing you're supposed to use with the Arduino when you're using pulse width modulation. So I think the frequency is much higher. With the motor, it was buzzing. I think it's uh, 500 hertz or 20%. See how smooth it is. There's no flashing at all. 40%. 70%, 100%. So 